Morning well, guys, uh, I had a couple of people email me asking why I'm not producing as many videos as I was before. Um, there's a few reasons. The main ones have been quite busy. Obviously I come back from the UK after doing a contract there and we're pretty much moving house. We're also finishing the painting off this one because this one's coming up for rent as well by the end of this week. Um, so we've been quite, quite busy. Also we've been doing a lot with the um, property development, trying to get some more ventures going. Um, that's one thing. Another thing was, it's the focus on the Philippines. Right now, I've covered so many of the topics now, there's not a lot left until I go back, I suppose. Um, but one of the other things that has become something I've been noticing quite a lot, a lot of people engage with, there's a lot of neg negativity where there's a lot of stuff that goes backwards and forwards. And one of the things, if you're constantly in that environment, it's constantly negative. Um, now, I'm not saying the guys have got no reason to be doing it. I'm just saying that the, um, from my viewpoint, it's not producing anything um, except negativity. And um, the easiest way is quite simply just sidestep it all. Because a lot of it is regurgitated on a regular basis. Because you'll get some people say this. Then it gets regurgitated in the defense, and then it gets it just goes round and round. It's, there is no end to it. <laughs> That's the problem. It's not as if you're dealing with people that want to change, or um, it, it's like a business problem. I mean, it's, for example, this broken phone that was sent out to me. The company complained. I gave them a negative video. Well, they sent me a broken phone. They're saying it wasn't broken, and I'm like, okay, fine. But your last four reviews on eBay have all been negative because of similar issues. Um, I'm not saying they're sending out broken phones, but the point being is I've got a broken phone, it's got to go in the bin, got to get another phone. I could make that a negative thing, but the reality is it's just a broken phone. Just get another one. Don't even think about it. It's not like uh, I'm trying to make it into a Kodak moment or gleaming me smiles. It gives me a new opportunity. But simply accepting it doesn't work. Um, so that's one of those things. But uh, I think this is the problem. A lot of people, and because we're in such an environment where there's so much negativity on negative focus, if you look at the newspapers, it's all doom and gloom. How often do you see good stuff in there? It's all running everything down. And, um, even in the UK, even the government want us to do negative stuff. If our neighbor's doing something um, like, say, working in their on unemployment benefit, the government want us to call the government to arrest our neighbor. I'm not being funny. The government get enough tax. I don't deal with MPs' expenses. They don't deal with it either. Um, so in my viewpoint, that's not my problem. And I think this is the, the, the some of these issues where you've got to simply say, that's nothing to do with me. I don't want nothing to do with it. Um, but then you've got the reverse of this, which is actually trying to keep everything positive and moving things forward. Um, somebody on the Spanish channels, there was a few negative questions that were asked. And... I answered them, and a couple of people said, why did you bother even asking, answering the questions? Well, the answer is, you've got to turn around and quite simply put the right answer. You know, when somebody tells you um, they're looking at your thumb or something, when they, they don't realize the video's in 360, so they don't move the screen around, um, they assume they're just looking at your thumb, but when they go back and you've told them, look, it's in 360, just put your mouse on the screen and pull it around, you'll see that you can actually see the whole room. They're sort of like, oh, I didn't realize that. But they may have put a negative comment because they're thinking, this is terrible, but it's because they don't know how to use the technology. So that's a positive out of that. Somebody's learned how to use a new piece of technology. Um, in the same way when somebody says the the area looks like a concrete, concrete jungle, it's like, have a look on Google Maps. I mean, where we live, it's like um, you got like a the beach, then a lamata saw like along a strip, then behind that you've got a big nature park. It's not a concrete jungle. There's a lot of stuff around it, but 
you could actually just argue with them, but the point is you don't need to. You need them to go and look at the stuff themselves. You've got to turn around and say, well, have a look. Go and research it. And that this is the part of the battle online. Part of the battle in life these days, because everything is drummed up in a negative way, unfortunately. Um, it's like I got an email off the telephone company yesterday uh, saying, oh, we went to the wrong address. Um, we've rescheduled to transfer your internet and we'll be back in touch. No date, no time. Uh, we'll leave here this week. Um, but the point is, I could, could call them up and be this and that, but in all honesty, I think what's happened is they've sent a technical team to the new house, realized that it needs a new cable. So they need to send for another team that actually rewires, and they've had to requeue it. But the email should have actually just said, it's got to be another two weeks, whatever, a time scale. Simple thing. So this morning, just sent them an email just saying, any idea time scale? Because it's supposed to be installed this week. But I do know from dealing with call center staff and client facing, you get a lot of negativity and a lot of the negative focus people push out there is not necessarily about you. It's about other stuff. Um, for example, I'm sure a lot of telephone companies get a lot of abuse about connections being late or whatever. When the reality is a lot of people are under a lot of stress from moving house, um, getting earache off their partner about things needing to be done, business people hassling them saying this has got to be done tomorrow and the telephone company's going, it'll be done next week. You know, there's a lot of reasons that things impact people. And this is one of the things I want to say about the expat community. A lot of that goes on. A lot of people have other issues going on and some of them are very long term. And quite simply, you know, when people go, Matt, what about this this guy or whatever? I don't care. I don't know the guy. Never met the guy. No interest in the guy. Um, and it's not me being negative. It's just the fact is he's got no bearing or connection to me whatsoever. And, okay, he spends, what, five years writing stuff about me. Where I don't care. I'm not interested. Um it doesn't have any bearing. This is the important bit. And this is, a, I think, a lot of expats need to start just living their lives, should we say. I know a lot of people go to the Philippines and have too much time on their hands. I get the same in Spain. You'll see a lot of this stuff in the um, Facebook chats and stuff where people just post sarcastic comments because they're sat there with nothing else to do. Um, it's, it's just... Exactly that is they have nothing else to do. Doesn't mean they can't create something else to do. I mean, like the last few weeks, I've been flat out, but I've still spent time going swimming with the children. I still went to the beach and that was with, with some of my friends as well. So we spent time with the kids, spent time with my friends. I spend time very active um, on the social life. At the same time, still getting all the work done, getting the house moved done, met with the owner of this place, he's all happy with the condition it's in, and I told him I'll repaint the ceilings. Um, so he's happy. You know, at the end of the day, this one's going to be rented out next week, and all the issues that we've sort of come across, it's all going to be rectified. Simple as that. Because, I mean, you do get things like this. This is part of the building. Um, it, it's going to need some alcohol wash on this, but this all this has been is where um, there's been like some blinds and stuff on there. But it's all little cosmetic things. But it, I think that's a, it on the surface. A lot of the problems people have are small things, but they make it a big thing because it's reflective of something else. Um, I mean, what what affects me mostly? Uh, I think. I don't think some people see the difference. I know some people have said I've been happier in Spain. There's, there is some reasons for that. Because if I died out in the Philippines or whatever, and the April League kids are left out there, the security is based on just the apartment income. 
Here in Spain, there's more job opportunities. April can work if something happened to me. By the time ever, anything ever did happen, we should already be solidly in Spain in multiple ways. So April and the kids are looked after. Because my main focus is family. So that is where I put myself 110%. Uh, I, I step back from work a lot. You know, at the end of the day, I've had a contract come in uh, this week for the Ministry of Justice. And I'm looking at it, and the first thing I'm thinking about is time scale. Yeah, how long is this going to affect me being away from Spain? If I go and take the contract, what am I going to do with the, the money I generate to make Spain more stable? That's what I'm focusing on. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's the reality of it. You focus on what will be a positive outcome. And that's why things have been progressive over time. You know, I don't really have these, you know, because I know some people are expecting something to go wrong tomorrow or something. I don't really suffer with that. What I, what I have is we all have bad days. And what, one of the things I will do, it's like been quite a bad one, is you simply say, right, tomorrow, we set the clock and we move forward from here. And a bad day for me would be like, uh, like in the Philippines where we had some construction workers really mess up our project. And you're thinking, I'm going to have to do that all again. Now, I could go shouting at these guys for not listening to a word they were told, using the wrong materials, etc., etc. But at the end of the day, it ain't going to fix the problem. Tomorrow will fix the problem when I get some new workers in and I sit there and I go through it with them and I stay there till they finish it. That fixes the problem. And I think if more people were that way inclined, it would stop a lot of the negativity in the forums, the uh, Facebook groups and on YouTube. Now, I know some people will always complain, always whine, but you know what? You don't have to listen to them. And I, that's the way I look at it. And that's why when some people go, oh, Matt, did you see this? No, <laughs> I didn't even look because I, I don't follow it and don't no interest in it. Um, and every now and again, somebody will say, well, look at this in two minutes. Sometimes I'll look and I'll go, okay. You know what? But it's... It's more a case of somebody's asked me to look at it in the first place. I don't go looking for these people. I don't follow them. I don't go around on YouTube with them. Or, you know, um, a lot of the the ones that are primarily focused on negative stuff, I don't watch any of their stuff. Um, initially, I was for a while, but then you start to see the patterns where they just cycle around, cycle around, and you just think. They're not looking to change or improve until they do that. They're just going to keep circling around, looking for something to complain about. Um, and when you're caught in that loop, you get more angry about the stuff that people are sending back to you in a negative way, yet you're projecting negativity onto them and then they reflect it back onto you. And it, and it just goes around in circles. Um, Quite simply, I ain't got time for it. I haven't got the interest for it. There's no positive outcome. And it's also why I say to people, if you want to make a living on YouTube, I'll get out of the Philippines genre. There is more genres out there that pay more, they're more upbeat, they're more positive. Um, like doing a how-to channel, just on how to open a LinkedIn account, how to make your first spreadsheet. You know what? 90% of the people on that say thank you. And you haven't even done much. You've just gone, this is this, move this, do that. And they go, thank you, because I've been trying to fix that all morning. Much, much more upbeat, much more, more positive feedback. But also, it's just fun to do. You're learning new stuff. You know, even if it's stuff that you haven't done before, the fact is that you find something you're interested in, learn about it, then try to teach others. Because let's face it, there's a lot of stuff at a higher level than some people can understand. Um, and the reason I say this is I have a habit of doing this because 
coming from the background I do, the people I normally work with are advanced in um, Microsoft Office, the environments, and things like MySQL, and they work in their specific niches. So we start at minimum at intermediate. So a lot of the stuff where people go, well, hang on a minute, how did you get to that? We've already gone past it because we, we already knew, knew that five, eight years ago. And that's where there will always be a niche. There will always be a niche for beginners. And in all honesty, I should do a beginner channel on stuff uh, because I do know there's a lot of market for that. You know, even for how to open a Facebook account, even, you know, very simple stuff. It may not be big cash generation over time, though, once you've got a thousand videos, say, on all these little projects, um, it builds up. There's a friend of mine that does it with English. Um, he did, for the first year, he set up, um, he would do a video a day for the, for the whole year. And that was his focus. He must do a video every day. Around this, he also developed um, flashcards, um, his, what do you call it, his ebooks, and different ebooks, vocabulary, blah, 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 different things. And also private tuition and group tuition. So over time, it's grown and grown. But it all started with one video a day. Now, his views initially were non existent because it takes time to build them up because people have to find something that just clicks. Um, it's a bit like doing Excel videos. You can do 50 Excel videos, but one video will make good money and the other ones will make pennies. But the point is, once people go, oh, there's that one, they start finding the other ones. And this is what happened with his. He's now in year two and it's still growing, you know, because he's still making money off the other, the old videos. He's still making money off the new videos. But more importantly, it's getting more and more subscribers because even in the old students go over the old videos because refreshers, etc. So there is more opportunity out there than a lot of people realize. Um, because I know a lot of people go, I'm going to go to the Philippines, I'll make some extra money doing the Philippines niche, but I'll tell you what, there's more money in other niches. And I like the how to's because I find them interesting. The Raspberry Pi ones. Now we've got the new office uh, set up. We're going to start doing more in the Raspberry Pi because it's good for my son for learning, but also good for um, tutorials and showing people different things you can do. Um, we've also got some software on robotics as well because that's that's what I like. I like robotics. That's what originally I wanted to do um, as my uh, well, not my job, my career. Um, wanted to develop robotics, but the the point being is. Not everything goes your way over time. And this is what I say to people when they're going to go to college and university. Separate the two. Unless you've got a career that is possible out of your university degree, you're better off doing something that will pay well and you can do and enjoy and then go back and do what I call my hobby career, um, which is the stuff you like doing. Because not always are you going to find a job in what you love doing that that's the reality now i know musicians and stuff go through the pain of that artists go through the pain of doing what they love but doing what you love doesn't always pay the bills um and it's not see the thing is i have a bit of balance on the old positivity it's just like you know what like if you want to do something it can be often subsidized by doing the hard bits first, um, because you can get you can get to where you want to be. You now, for example, I've got friends that do art exhibitions. Now, they are artists, but they're not full time artists. They still got jobs. Now, they still do exhibitions, and sometimes they don't make any money, you know, from selling paintings or photography or whatever. But they still do it because they love it but they still have a job that pays the bills. So I think you've got to just get a balance of what makes you happy and keep on that track. And that's why I say, you know, the negativity stuff, I'm just moving away from it completely. I can't, I can't be bothered with it. I mean, I could really bash Carillion at the moment for what's going on with them after some of the stuff they tried to do to me, but I don't. 
the, the reality is they're in a hard time, but at the end of the day, their decisions affect thousands of people. If anything, um, I just noticed Andy Jones is taking over the helm over in Canada. Now, Andy Jones, I met out in the Middle East. He's a, he knows what he's doing. He's a switched on guy, and he's probably, it's probably one of the best decisions Krillin has made in recent times. Um, so let's see the positive stuff come out of that. Because, I, I mean, I like working for them. I do. I mean, I don't like working for them direct. Um, I like contracting to them. But at the same time, it's like that, finding that medium. The medium is going as a contractor, working as a employee. It's a bit, for, in my personal opinion, it's a bit like um, being chained, chained to them in too many ways. Um, but that's my own personal preference. So all I'm saying to you guys, enjoy life and keep it positive. Simple as that. And, uh, you know, and like I said, when some of these guys get, so wrapped up in the negativity because it goes around in loops if you look at a, a lot of the very very negative guys you will see what i'm talking about it's always the same rubbish going round and round and round and it is rubbish because it's not about trying to get a decision out of this trying to do something upbeat trying to create something out of it it is simply the complaining the complaining the creating a negative um environment to get a negative response and it just goes round and round don't waste your time on it thanks for watching